On this episode of Fully Charged, I'm going to answer every question that you can throw at me about electric cars and renewable energy. Well, some of them. Go, let's go. So what I did was ask online, have you got any questions about uh, electric cars or, you know, renewable energy, tidal power, wind power, solar power, all those sorts of things. And I got about 120 questions came through rather quickly. And so I've tried to collate them and now I'm going to try and answer them as best I can. But the first one, which was the very first question that came in, was from a man called Jonathan Relf on Google+. And he asked, are there any electric pedal assist bikes that use regenerative braking. Now you'll notice that saying regenerative braking is a lot harder than explaining what it is. All it is is in a vehicle when you're going along the road and then you need to slow down or stop. Uh, as the wheel is slowing down and not having power applied to it, that starts generating electricity. An electric motor is also a generator. They're basically the same thing. So as the wheel is turning along the road, it's turning the generator and that sends electricity back into the batteries. Yes, there is a bike with that. So the next question is from a man called Michael Bromley. Uh, he said, when places such as the UK are potentially facing a future energy production shortfall, how are plug-in electric cars a practical solution given the massive increase in electrical energy demands that that would create? Very good question. Thank you, Michael. Um, as, you, as you might have seen if you've been watching Fully Charged regularly, uh, when we went to the uh, national grid, there is a very specific problem that we face uh, in, with electricity generation, and they call it the bathtub, which is slightly confusing. But what it is, basically, is early in the morning when you get up, there's this huge spike in electricity. Everybody puts their toasters on, has a shower, and boils the kettle, and listens to the radio, and charges their phones, and all that stuff. And then, then, then they, they go to work, and there's a, this kind of constant level, and it goes really high at 7 o'clock in the evening when everybody comes home and has, switches on the cooker and cooks tea and watches the telly and, and what goes on the computers and, and then once, about 11 o'clock onwards there's this huge fall off and it drops right down really really low because there's no demand at night you know there's a few factories working overnight there's a few trains running there's really tiny amount of demand and that is when we all plug in our electric cars and what is interesting is the generating industry the electricity industry the national grid are desperate for us to have electric cars because what it would do is ease that dip now why is that just because they want to make more money so they can charge us overnight no the reason is turning big generators on and off is very very expensive and very inefficient and the more they can level out these huge dips in demand so instead of it going like that if it's going like that that's hugely easier for them to, to manage and much cheaper and much more efficient. Tim Maltby asks, he doesn't just ask, he goes, OK. That's how he starts. OK, has charging a car on a terrace street been considered? Yeah. Oh, sorry, Tim, I haven't considered that. I have considered that with enormous depth. There's a thing called inductive charging. It's just being really introduced on a commercial level at the moment. Now, inductive charging sounds really technical. It's really, really old fashioned. Tesla, Nikola Tesla was doing it 120 years ago. Inductive charging means no wires. So basically there's a plate set in the road and you park your electric car above that plate and it starts charging. You don't have to do anything. So A. Miles Davis asked, aside from the Nissan Leaf and Chevy Volt, are there any other major attempts at electrical primary electric cars? I, I, I assume they mean um, uh, any other companies. Well, just about every manufacturer I've ever heard of, not Ferrari, uh, uh, not Aston Martin, uh, are bringing out uh, either full electric cars or plug-in hybrid cars or hybrid cars in the next 12 months. Dave Coombe asks, how much electricity could we as a country generate if we were to fit every appropriately angled and faced property with solar panels? What a brilliant question. Well, the answer to that is, I haven't got a clue. And there is a very, very good book that you can look at if you're interested, and here it is. It is called Sustainable Energy Without the Hot Air by David J.C. McKay. I don't agree with all of it. I don't think he's 100% right, but he is brilliant. And he then goes through all the facts and figures of how much solar this country could generate, how much we could generate from wind, how much we could generate from nuclear, how these different things weigh up. And it is a very, very worthwhile read if you're interested in this topic. And I think it's possibly quite important to be interested in this topic. There's other topics as well. <laughs> but this one is going to affect all of us whether we like it or not. <laughs>